Welcome to another episode of High Gluttony, our High Gluttoneers. Today we're using some pretty simple ingredients to make sauces that I was pretty intimidated by before this first pass with Gretchen. But of course, Gretchen talks us through the process and I have enough confidence to try it again. And that's what we really hope you feel at the end of this episode. Exactly. So today we are talking about emulsions, those fickle... (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> the sub noise of emulsions is <laughs> and then a little bit more <laughs> and how about a little just one more time <laughs> emulsions emulsions <laughs> so we are today we are doing aioli and uh to toom to them. Yeah. We, we found that pronou- that pronunciation, th- both those pronunciations. So depending on probably where you're located, it varies a little bit. But this is a garlic emulsion sauce because we had to find something for Becca that didn't use eggs. So right. <laughs> Becca doesn't like it. Right. So Becca, <laughs> Becca won on this one because we found <laughs> the most amazing sauce. Super easy, although my first two attempts went perfectly, and my third time I tried to make it, I broke it. So it <laughs> is possible. Although I'm, I'm convinced maybe I didn't use enough garlic in that batch. So that might have been my issue. I was also upset. So, you know, maybe don't make emotions when you're having some emotional turmoil. It might help. <laughs> right. <laughs> Even though it's simple. We've learned you have to be focused. Yeah, focus is very important for these. Right, right. So we wanted to give you one of those really sort of world level one, as far as culinary school goes anyway, experiences. So something that's we did on the ground floor, uh, literally, uh, considering that is where the, the skills classes take place at the CIA, or they used to, <laughs> I don't know if they still do. <laughs> so that was important to me, was to get this this basic information to you. And so for the, for my aioli, I don't usually use a recipe. I, cause there's a basic race ratio you can usually use for aioli or any egg, uh, egg stabilized Base. emulsion is one egg yolk to one cup of oil. And then you can kind of add whatever you want in a little, a pretty loose tur. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's a loose recipe. <laughs> Once you get used to making it, you can just go go wild. Customize it. And now I totally forgot where I was going, and I'm not even high. <laughs> well, you didn't use a recipe. Oh, but I think I you were going to say, yeah. <laughs> so I did not use a recipe for my aioli, but I'll put the basic recipe on our blog. But we're using the Mediterranean dish recipe for the artuum, and that will also be in the blog. And... A food processor, hand mixer, immersion blender can work for this, but really blenders or food processors are going to be your best friends. And then we do share the recipe that we're using at some point, but it happens kind of later in the episode and we mention it at earlier parts. So we thought we would just kind of talk you through like the quick steps of it right here, just so you have an idea of what we're talking about when we reference things before we've actually shared the recipe. So the first steps are basically us combining slash mincing garlic and salt in the food processor. Then we're adding some lemon juice. And then the most important part here is to be slowly adding oil and ice water intermittently for about 10 minutes. We <laughs> Gretchen had a really fun setup in her house on this day that we were recording. And so, wait, was it this day or was it a different one? No, it was this day. No, it was this day. That's right. We're we're constantly working on the sound issues. So we were trying a blanket fort in the kitchen to bring the ceiling (laughs) down to see if that helped. Right. So the animals were all over the kitchen this day. And in particular, one of Gretchen's cats, Kenzie, was desperate to be showing Gretchen attention and a part of what was going on and curious. And so we were it was impossible to ignore her throughout pretty much the entire time. So you'll hear us get interrupted by Kenzie. Yeah. (laughs) Several times. (laughs) But could be more excited about this tuum sauce because it's, or tuum or, uh, 
this wonderful garlic emulsion sauce. It's amazing. <laughs> My dad keeps begging me to make it. So I'm going to have to make another batch again. So or refix my old, my broken batch. I haven't decided which. I still have it. <laughs> right. Exactly. So hopefully you guys will pick it up too, because it's so good. You can put it on anything. So, mm-hmm. so many options. So many. So, as Gretchen said, we will be sharing that recipe, a basic aioli recipe, and a few of our thoughts and learnings from what we went through um, on highgluttony.com. And then check out our Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube for videos and photos of the process and just some of the things that we're using. Excellent. And enjoy the Latin years. Have fun. (laughs) On to section one of the great emulsion aioli tomb adventure. (laughs) So we we actually start this off this episode off where we have to talk about Mr. Podrick and his great escape into the front outside <laughs> the front yard <laughs> not that he was not supposed to make when I got my <laughs> my drug delivery that day <laughs> medicine yeah my medicine my drugs my medicine and once we're done with that we start <laughs> talking about emotions and we, this first section has me making uh, an aioli just so that I've done that as part of the episode because I really felt like we couldn't do this without doing an egg-based emulsion. So my aioli uses garlic, mustard, lemon juice, and water. And then I used, a, I think I actually used a blend of canola and olive oil because it was like light tasting olive oil. And talked totally through the process and the very, very important point of why you have to slowly add your oil and what the texture and consistency is that you are looking for. So I mostly just listen at this part and Gretchen talks me through how it works and what her process is and why each step is kind of important and also why you can be kind of loose with it, as she said in the intro. So it's fun. You, it's fun to listen, even if you're not an egg person like myself. So enjoy. A few tips. <laughs> so here's the deal with why Pod escaped. Tell me. Normally during the day, he doesn't really go outside. He usually is kind of sleeping most of the afternoon. So I was like, and we had ordered from Ease. So I was waiting for my delivery person to come. And she shows up and so I open the front door and I just kind of prop it open. And she's like halfway through hand, you know, getting my information and stuff. And we're chatting a little bit because she had to do a far out delivery and off goes pod out the front door down the side. Oh my God. Like he was on a mission to go somewhere. Like he was waiting for that moment. (laughs) It was very much like he was waiting, waiting for this opportunity (laughs) to escape. (laughs) Oh my so, God. Gus runs out the door and she's like, oh my gosh, you're around it. And I'm like, oh, frick, he never does this. Like he never goes out during the day. Never an issue. And yeah, uh, wow. ran off. And so like, then the lady leaves and cause he like ran almost all the way down to my neighbor's house. Wow. Mom, mom saw him running on the other side of the bench. Like, <laughs> she comes to this door and I'm chasing after him outside not running fast, but he's just <laughs> do, 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 going for a little walk. And, yeah. <laughs> and then, then, so we're like, okay, well, we'll get him in the pen. He's very smart. So he's like easy to deal with. And then we open that. He starts running into the front garden right in front of the house here, mm-hmm. which luckily we also have the gate on the other end. So he starts running down there. So I'm like, okay, I'll go open the other gate. And of course, as soon as I get to the other end, he starts running back the other way. Then he's like <laughs> running all over the place. Finally, we managed to get him to go down the, the garden along the front of the house and in the in that gate. But it was just like it took <laughs> three least, adults. Three uh, yeah, two two adults. <laughs> but he was not cooperating and he did not want to do that. He was like, No, I just want to be out. I'm like, no, yeah. sorry, buddy. <laughs> not how this is going today. Yeah, he's like, I just don't agree right now. I'm just going to stay here. I'm just going to go. I'm just going to run around. (laughs) Freedom! Yeah, that was very much what it was like. 
he wasn't going anywhere fast. She's like, I'm sorry. Like the little poor ease driver is like, I'm so sorry. He's like, no, I, this is unusual behavior from this rabbit. Yeah. Like it has nothing to do with you. It's fine. He'll be fine. <laughs> Probably going to run us around for a few minutes. So, <laughs> right. Uh, and he just get, stuck his head under the, the curtain over here and was like, hello. Oh my God. And, that, and then I said, hi. And he went, Phew, bye. <laughs> So what you can't see that I can see, listeners, we have decided to call gluttoneers. Hello, gluttoneers. our gluttoneers. Hi, gluttoneers. So, gluttoneers, what you can't see right now is that Gretchen has this curtain hanging between her kitchen where she is and the sort of like office space entryway behind her. And so her rabbits keep running back and forth under, under the, the curtain. And it is the funniest thing in the world. So you'll probably hear us talking about that yes. the whole time. <laughs> the whole time. Yeah. yeah. Let's not lie to ourselves. Yeah. That will be a topic of conversation for the whole time. <laughs> Until Pod decides to go outside and abandon me. So Right. So so we're starting off our episode on emulsion sauces. I am going to make an aioli, but since Becca does not love eggs, she's not going to do this. And this is something that we typically learn early on in culinary school. There are two types of emulsion sauces, and they are oil and water and water and oil, because that's basically your two types of liquid that you can have is oil or water. The one we're doing today is oil and water. I am starting my aioli by putting garlic, mustard, and lemon juice in together. And I'm going to start by pureeing this up a little bit for my first step. Before you start that, is that... Dijon or yellow mustard? Either works. I happen to have Dijon. Okay. I have Trader Joe's French Dijon mustard, but I tend to have several different types of mustard on hand right. most of the time. So I'm going to turn time. this yeah. sucker on, maybe. It's a brand new thing, and I apparently don't know how to use it. <laughs> I wish I could help you, but I feel like I'm just watching myself whenever I try to change something. <laughs> I did use this successfully the other day, so I know I <laughs> so can do it. it. There is a way. <laughs> I just have to get the, okay, maybe I'm doing this wrong. I might have been putting the lid on wrong. Oh, I put the oh, lid, there lid we go. on wrong. I'm going to add a little bit extra lemon juice here and then uh, a little bit of water. So in goes lemon juice and water. And so I'm just sort of pureeing this up a little bit to chop my garlic and let me pull this off so you, I can show it to you. See, this is what. Okay, I, so this is what would be considered a water base. Yes, yes. Okay. So I put a little bit of water just to give me some more liquid to start with. And then I'm going to add my egg yolk. I'm just making about a little over a cup of aioli here. So <laughs> one egg yolk? One egg yolk. Okay. So one egg yolk to one cup of oil. Got it. And sometimes I'll, I will actually use a little extra egg yolk just to make sure I've got enough um, emulsifier in there. Got it. So I'm going to, I'm going to pulse that a little bit just to mix that up. Now I get to cheat <laughs> today <laughs> because my new handy dandy food processor has, the, it has a drizzler. Oh. There is a little hole in the bottom there. Yours might also have that. So you might be able to do this. I'll check. I'm going to start running this. And the nice thing is, is that this will drizzle for me. So I don't need to worry about adding the oil too fast because that is one of your three main mistakes that you can make with an emulsion sauce is that you, if you add the oil in too fast, your emulsion will break. So, which means your oil will not be suspended in your water. I mean, I can't just like dump this in there, but it does help keep it consistent. So if you don't have that, just slow and steady. Slow and steady. And how much oil are you putting in? So it's going to be a cup total. Okay. I've done about a quarter of a cup so far. So this is pretty good. It's a okay. good start. Can you describe it a little? You can definitely tell it's thickening up because it's going to, getting those oil droplets interspersed is going to make a thicker liquid. And we're back on again. So then <laughs> I'm pretty much just going to go ahead and add the rest of this. And hopefully this will work out just perfect. Not I, if I break it, that will uh, be a really good example of how you can break it. <laughs> <laughs> we love examples for everybody, good and bad. Well, it's all good. So doing this by hand is a huge pain in the ass. I re- always recommend using some sort of food processor for this. Ta-da! 
it's beautiful, shiny, perfect. It's pretty much perfect. Nice. Good job. See that nice, nice texture. Yeah. Holds its shape. If you need it a little thinner, you add a little more water. And to that, I just made mayonnaise. Ta-da. Okay. So aioli is mayonnaise. Aioli is mayonnaise. Aioli tends to be like the definition of it has a little more garlic to it. And I did soak my garlic cloves in lemon juice before I added them to this so that they would be not as intense. And I think it really worked. Got it. I okay. like to add a little bit of extra acid to my aiolis usually because otherwise they're just a little too fatty for me. Got it. That's why I typically don't love store-bought mayonnaise for that reason because they're always a little bit too fatty. No salt and pepper? I Yeah, I will. I should have added salt. Yes. I, pepper, just salt. Typically not. Just because of what we talked about last time with the white, with pepper and looking a bit like dirt. There's no reason you can't. It's just, I just don't, not I for usually, you. not for me. I usually just add salt. All right, I'm going to give this a rinse where we go on to our second emulsion sauce. Yeah. Since that's, that's what oh. we're doing here today. Are you okay? Yep. I see a kitten. Hi, Kenzie. <laughs> oh, it's Kenzie. Yeah, I just saw a little, like the tip of the body, the top of the back. <laughs> Are you joining us, Kenzie? She's like, what the hell is going on in here today? Why is it a blanket fort? I don't understand. What 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 is this over here for? I know, Kenzie. Strange things are afoot at the High Gluttony headquarters. Yeah, she's going through the curtain now. I can see her. This is so fun. <laughs> so I was going to say, as evidenced by the fact that I just put that together in about five minutes, emulsion sauces are, there's a little bit of a trick to them but they're not hard. And if you practice a little bit, you should be able to master it pretty easily, especially if you understand the concepts behind it. What was that final consistency you're looking for? If you had to equate it, I guess mayonnaise you said, which is probably the most equivalent. Yeah. I mean, it's sort of a semi-solid state almost. And it depends on how much water you add because it can be you can make it more saucy if you add a little bit more water or a little bit more lemon juice. It just depends on what you're looking for. So had mm-hmm. I not added any water, really, it would be thicker. But since I added a little bit of water to start with, it, it was definitely, it's a spreadable consistency, you know, like, got it. Yeah. You're definitely looking for that mayonnaise consistency. <laughs> okay, perfect. That's what everybody knows. Yeah, exactly. Okay, section two. In this part, we're really doing a deeper dive into explaining emulsions. I say we, but obviously it's Gretchen. (laughs) So she (laughs) talks us through how they work and shares a little bit of examples about the two different major types of sauces that you make in general and just some of the differences between a water-based or an oil-based sauce. So everything we're doing in this episode is oil into water. And there are two major types. There's oil into water and water into oil, which is not as common and is generally used for things like margarine. So there end up being a much harder uh, what's the word? substance, uh, whereas most oil into water, right, <laughs> are spreadable or pourable consistency. I mean, that's not everything, but that's a, a general rule we can think of because even milk, butter, those are all oil into water emulsions. So even though they're natural and they just come out of a cow that way. <laughs> uh, <laughs> very natural. <laughs> and we also talk through emulsif- different emulsifiers, leth- lecithin, it, which is a very important part of most emulsions, although not tomb, because tomb doesn't really have any of those. And then we talk about some of the other ways that our emulsions are made without using a chemical emulsifier. Then you have your physical means usually to whip it all together and make it right. Right. So Gretchen really just, again, talks us through those differences and compares it a little bit to some of the magic butter that she makes and compares the process of using her sunflower lecithin with like the egg lecithin that comes into play later on. 
-hmm. So the, we, Gretchen also, because of all of this comparison and explanation gives us a couple really good tips about what you want to be on the lookout for in terms of some common mistakes that can happen. So that's really helpful to have that information. I thought that was really helpful before we even started turning on the food processor. So we hope that that's also helpful for you right up front like this. So that is an oil in water emulsion. Okay. And so let's, let's talk a little bit about emulsions before we are off Perfect. to the races on the rest of our, our, our episode here, our episode here. So the second sauce we're going to make today is also an oil in water. Yes. But okay. it doesn't, we're basically using a physical process to emulsify it and then using the garlic because it uses an entire head of garlic <laughs> as the stabilizer, which is going to hold that emulsified oil separate from itself. Got it. Because that's pretty much the whole thing about emulsion sauces is that what you're doing is breaking apart whatever you're trying to suspend. So you have what you call your continuous liquid and your dispersed liquid. So for this, your continuous liquid is your water and your dispersed liquid is your oil. Okay. When you do a water and oil, it's oil is your continuous, water is your dispersed. What is an example of a oil, a water in oil sauce? I think like a cheese sauce would really be the best uh, example. Okay. So when we made our our mac and cheese, right? So really, that was a oil and water. water. Yeah. Because it was water first. But <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, I'll try and think of a better, a different example. Okay. Because there are lots of like cream sauces where you use like stock as part of the liquid would pretty much be like a oil and water, but that's not okay. a really good example. I mean, my first I, thought was sal like a salad dressing. I mean, that's not like a sauce, but if I'm mixing it, it doesn't necessarily matter the order, but I always do oil and then vinegar and then right. Yeah. Other things. So essentially. Yes. That that's, that's it. That's okay. a water and oil because you're adding the vinegar into the oil. Mm -hmm. And then typically you're just using a, a physical. So like the mixing to keep, you know, to make it emulsify, mm -hmm. but it's not going to be stable because it will not stay interspersed you're you're gonna have a time frame on how long that'll stay suspended together so got it whereas with the the mayo or the aioli you've got your egg yolk which in the the thing that's in the egg yolk that makes it an emulsifier is uh lecithin and and pretty much lecithin in general is just an emulsifier hold on i got i got my sunflower lecithin out today so that I could cool. show you because I actually use when I do use my magical butter machine man we could really go down a bunch of rabbit holes today with it <laughs> right but because especially when you use butter because butter is you have fat and you have water and you have milk solids and those are all separate parts so butter itself is an emulsion and when you melt it the reason why you can't like just like butter doesn't go back together like you once you've melted it you've melted it the oil separates from the the solids and the water and then that's you're done but if you use sunflower lecithin it'll help keep it together also you i did discover this year that using a hand mixer while i chill it will really bring the emulsification back together and make it much more usable as a whole butter pro product versus wow. when you do it without that, it still separates a bit. Like it stays better suspended as long as you use the lecithin, but it doesn't, it wasn't as good as when I did it with the hand mixer and the lecithin and went from there. So, wow. You yeah. are learning so much about it. Uh, yeah. I mean, I'm getting better about at this the all the time. Yeah. That's great. So, so yeah, when you're doing an emulsion, what we were doing here is breaking up the oil into little pieces. And your lecithin or your emulsifier has, and I keep envisioning these like sperm. Of course. Because that's <laughs> all we talk right. about. Right. Well, yeah, penises, <laughs> sperm. We talk about a lot of male reproductive anatomy shit because they have a head and a tail. So I'm like, mm -hmm. how am I not supposed to picture it looking like sperm if it's got a head Naturally. and a tail? Right. No other option. And... The, the tail, your emulsifier, likes fat. So that part attaches to the fat molecule 
And then the head of that actually likes water. So that's Hmm. basically your emulsifier coats the molecule of the fat and holds it in the water because of that tail that goes into the fat molecule and the the head that stays out, hang out in the water. If that makes any sense whatsoever. So the... um so the emulsifier is what becomes shaped like that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's so like, that's the already the shape it has. That's a, like its natural shape is like it has a head and a tail. So with the aioli, the egg is the emulsifier? Correct. And it's structured with a head and a tail? Mm-hmm. Yeah. The lethicin would have that structure. That's part of the egg. <sighs> the lethicin. Got it. Yeah. Okay. We're, spe- and- right. We're specifically talking about that. Got it. Okay. And it also is related to the protein in the egg and that that creates a network for the fat to be suspended in the water. Okay. And then the garlic is going to do that in the next sauce we make. Right. Right. So the garlic is our base, our water, essentially. So any liquid you have with the garlic, that's, that's our continuous liquid. And then okay. the oil that we're going to be adding is our... Ah, shit. What's the word? The word I'm looking for that I used earlier. Now I don't remember. I know. I can't remember it either. All right. So you have continuous. I'm going to say discontinuous. It's not the continuous (laughs) one. It's the disjointed. It's just something. (laughs) Where are my notes? (laughs) Dispersed. Dispersed liquid. Oh, that's right. It's like continuous and dispersed. Yeah. (laughs) So you got your continuous and dispersed. So our continuous liquid or substance is going to be our garlic with the lemon juice. And then we're going to be adding in the oil and ice cold water alternating for our tuum. And so the garlic, basically, the fact that we're using a puree of garlic, that basically kind of gets in the way the process of like the oil separating out from the water. So it just sort of like pulls it. It's like, no, no, you're not allowed over there. Can't, you can't all go together. You got to stay, you got to spread out. <laughs> yeah. Six you feet gotta, apart, people. <laughs> yeah. It's like alcohol at a high school dance. It's the. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it away. Keep it out of their hands. <laughs> mm. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> so. Garlic is very interesting then. If garlic? It, is interesting, but it doesn't have anything that actually acts as an emulsifier in it other than just having an actual like structure. So, so, so even though it does technically emulsify the sauce, it doesn't emulsify it in the way of connection. It's more keeping things just separate enough that they still hold together, but don't interact. Right. Yes. But okay. also do interact. I don't know. It's very hard. It's a little confusing as to how that works. But sure. Because I actually wasn't aware of this concept until today. And or till yes, today. I did. I forgot to do my emulsion sauce research last night. I did, I did garlic, but not emulsion sauce. Mm-hmm. Your emulsion sauce mistakes that you can make. The three most common, and these are pretty much going to be the, the only ways to break things. But so if you add your liquid too quickly your liquid to be dispersed too quickly because it's just like, nope, can't do it. I need my flow to be at a certain rate. Otherwise, it just doesn't work. It just goes, ah, no, and throws everything off the assembly line, basically. I'm like, not even in any sense with these metaphors. I think <laughs> there are a lot of them. And I'm, I think I've got it. That works for me. Yeah. It's too much. It's overload. Yeah, it's overload. You don't want to overload it. You have to be really gentle. It wants to be friends first. It doesn't want to jump right into a romantic relationship. There you go. So you got to take it slow. Take it slow. And then if you don't measure your disper- your liquid that you're going to disperse, if you add too much, you get a similar problem where it just goes, ah, shit, I can't handle this. And, th- and that really applies, especially when you're doing it with the like an egg yolk, those type egg bake so- egg based sauces. Egg yolks can only handle so much. You know, it's like one cup of oil to one egg yolk. That's it. That's as much as it can handle. That's every anything lower than that is a deal breaker for the egg yolk. <laughs> Red flag. Red flag. Nope. Which episode was it where we were making a sauce and you were talking about the guy you dated who put we'll 12? Get, all right. 
Yeah, we'll okay. get to that. We'll get to that. Okay. Is that, I, that is my at the end of my list because that's not a common mistake to make. All right, please keep going. So your other your other problem is if you get your hot sauce too hot or too cold. Again, you're usually going to have more of a problem if it's hot, more too warm. I don't think so here's the interesting thing. I don't think the two of them is easy to break. This is going to be a much harder thing to fuck up in my opinion. Okay. <laughs> than doing it with egg because you don't have that necessary limitation that the, you know, like an egg yolk can only hold a, a you know, a cup. Like that's it. No no more. Okay. So you I think where you would have problems with this is if like you ran it in your food processor too long cuz that heats it up just enough. And it'll start letting it separate out. That's where I think you might run into issues with this. But I'm not sure. But I got it right on my first try. So very easily. So okay, I think do not be Is, afraid. <laughs> okay. Is that one of the reasons why we add the ice water in between to keep I, it cool? That I think so. That I think it's okay. to help it stay cooler. And yeah, that is exactly why I think the ice water is a key part of this whole scenario. Okay. So those are your three most common, easiest to make mistakes. And I think if I was ranking them, I think number one is definitely the adding liquid too quickly. That is 90% of the time when you, you mess okay. up an emotion sauce. Number, my number two reason would be overheating. That's your next one. That's your next most common. Adding too much of your dispersed liquid, that's going to be number three for me because that means you're just not measuring or you, you know, decided it could take a little more. No, that's not how this works. <laughs> Hard stop. Hard stop. Then you have not knowing when your sauce is done, I guess would really be the problem here or what a broken sauce looks like or knowing when you can actually tell if your sauce is broken. Because as we've discussed before on this podcast, I was dating this person once, thought they broke something, and then added so many egg yolks to fix it <laughs> because he was trying to fix it. First of all, he was fixing it wrong, I think was part of the problem. <laughs> he was just throwing the egg yolks into the mayonnaise <laughs> and then running the pot food processor and not waiting. So not only was he adding way too many egg yolks, he just kept processing it, right? So then right. it's way You're past its consistency point. Right. But he also had not anywhere near enough oil in it <laughs> for it to have broken, really. <laughs> and especially after he added all those egg yolks, it was just like, oh no. You, so we just kept adding oil and adding oil and adding oil and adding oil until it looked right. <laughs> and we had much mayonnaise. Now, luckily, this was in a restaurant setting. So it did actually all get used and did not go to waste. But sure. in a home Don't setting, do it at home. Yeah. Don't do that at home. You'd have a gal <laughs> like a gallon of mayo and you do <laughs> not. No one needs that unless you're throwing a huge party. OK. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. So if your if your sauce does break it, or since we're kind of talking about aioli in particular, if your aioli does break, can you do something to get it back? Usually, would you add a little bit more egg yolk in another scenario if you only did a little bit? <laughs> yes. So so the the way you would fix any egg emulsified sauce is you let it cool like let it cool down some because uh, that you might also be too hot. So if you let it cool some, you should be able to bring it back. And what you're going to want to do is basically start another base. So you're going to have your egg yolk with maybe a little bit of garlic. I especially would add the egg yolk and then add a little acid to it. I typically, it's like lemon juice or vinegar or something. Okay. Just to give you a little more volume to work with, because sometimes that's helpful. And then you stream your broken sauce into your new base. Base. And then you, but you have to go slow again. Here's the key why I'm, I'm going to say most of the time it's the speed that gets you in trouble. It has to be in a stream. There's no getting around that it has to be streamed in. It's trust me. I've tried enough times where I, cause I have bad hands. So it's really hard for me to just hold something up while I'm trying to emulsify it. So I do not recommend trying to do like add a little bit of oil and make sure it's in add a little bit of oil. It seems the best way is the streaming the oil in it, mm -hmm. and that, so there's just no way around that. You pretty much, that's your only option. So yeah. Yep. They got a date. They got to court each other. Like you said yeah. earlier. Yeah. It's, you got to really, you know, you got to make these decisions carefully. 
Yes. So yeah, long time, long getting to know you period for the uh, emulsion sauces. <laughs> Perfect. So, so now I'm on That's, my thir- third okay, emulsion sauce of the day now that we're going to do this together. Yeah. Uh, well, was there anything else you wanted to say about emulsions? I think that covers everything. Perfect. On to section three, where we talk about garlic for so long. <laughs> there was also some onion talk in there too, but we've decided to remove that just for yeah. time uh, efficiency and yeah. focusing on <laughs> what we're really doing here. So we learned a lot about garlic, how amazing it is that there are way more types than I ever imagined. Share some names. They all have interesting names one of them is called music (laughs) amazing what music music (laughs) music garlic yeah (laughs) so I try I also try and go over the plant anatomy a little bit I'm not sure I did a great job because I was as part of the premise of this whole podcast is hi (laughs) So we'll try and make some nice, clear diagrams or something to share, maybe, (laughs) so that it's a little clearer on uh, what I was talking about. (laughs) But email us if you have questions, and we'll try to get a better answer answer. for you. (laughs) Enjoy our garlic talk. What about garlic? Garlic. Oh, my God. My brother last year asked me what type of garlic should I plant? And I feel like an asshole because I'm like, I don't know. Isn't garlic garlic? I didn't know there were like, I mean, I assumed there were different types because I know there are so many types of onions. And Mm. so garlic is part of the onion family. We'll get into that in a second. So this year, the other day, I was looking through one of my seed catalogs for my garden. And this was after we started talking about garlic the other day too. So, I mean, this was like a couple of days ago. There are 20 types of garlic available from the seed catalog. (laughs) What? I have heard of elephant garlic and garlic. Guess what? (laughs) Elephant garlic is not actually garlic. (laughs) Of course. The one other thing I knew. (laughs) I trust me. Now here's why. It it it's actually it's actually a leek. So it is still in the onion family. Okay. Not garlic. Okay. But yeah, so like, I was like, what? Like, yeah, so it's a totally different plant, but (laughs) no idea. So I opened this up and I was just looking through it for fun. And I was like, wow, I feel like such an asshole because could have like told my brother 20 different types of garlic. And some of them are probably climate specific, right? Because your brother's in the UK. Yes. Well, I was kind of like, just plant some from the store because you could also do that. Like, well, you have, I'm sure you've gotten garlic from the store. You, it sprouts. Like, you can grow <laughs> garlic at home very easily. Like, very easily. So, but if you want to get all intentional about it. <laughs> so you have, do, should I read you all the names of the garlic? Do we want I'd to love to hear them. Here? Okay. Please. Just, just for fun. Let's do it. Number one, Bavarian purple, Mount Hood, purple glazer, Spanish Rioja. Romanian red, music, Georgian fire, Siberian, Deerfield purple, <laughs> Uzbekistan, premium northern white, Jagansky is I think how you pronounce this one. Not really sure. <laughs> Blanick, Susanville, Lord's Italian, Polish soft neck, early red Italian, silver white, Italian late, and western rose. They do also have elephant garlic on this page because really, who the fuck would have known it's not fucking garlic? <laughs> I, I mean, I'm sure whoever discovered it was just like, it's well, I not, know what gotta doing. be garlic, yeah. you know? Like, and, yeah. and probably it wasn't until like much later when they, you know, genetically <laughs> test these things that like somebody was like, oh shit, it's actually a leak. Right. Like how there was that whole dinosaur we grew up thinking existed and then suddenly people were like no that wasn't a thing actually (laughs) 
What dinosaur? What are you talking? Which about? one with the the long neck? A brontosaurus? Is that what it? Which one it was? Oh wait, what? That doesn't exist. I don't think they like existed. I don't think so. I gotta look it up to confirm, but I'm pretty sure that it was like, no, sorry, we got it wrong. Oh, that would be really disappointing. How sad. Sorry, keep going. Deeply fascinating. I also want to talk to you for a second about the structure of garlic, because basically all alliums, so all leeks, garlic, onions, shallots, scallions, chives are actually in that family. They're kind of technically like a green onion, but it does have like a little bulb. But the, so the garlic cloves are actually, you know, like, have you, if you've ever sliced a leek or, well, really any onion, how, though, so like those layers that are in there, those, mm. that's, that's garlic. Garlic is like, what are those leaves? Er? Yeah. What? <laughs> kind of blew my mind. One clove is the bottom of a leaf. This is the, these are the leaves. The peel, the outer peel. And part. Then, and so like, they're actually like layers to garlic too. They just usually, they're fatter layers. So they're like. Less distinguishable. Yes. But in the same way, it has almost a center core with so that, things growing around it in a 360 right. pattern outward. Right. So that's like how it grows from the inside out. So like, As opposed to other things that grow up. Right. Okay. Yeah. So pretty much the only one in the fan, in the onion family that just grows straight is a leek. Cool. Because green onions are kind of like halfway between a leek and a garlic. So the onion peel is not the leek. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. When you said yes, I was like, wait a minute, what did I ask? Because I didn't expect a yes, but yes. <laughs> I know. I was yeah. like, yeah. I was like, she's not going to like this, but I'm going to tell her yes. <laughs> okay. Got it. My mom just walked in and shushed the cat because she was yelling at me. <laughs> cat, they're recording. Was it Kenzie? Yes, of course. Well, she, I mean, she loves to be on camera, so. Yeah. <laughs> Always has to be part of the action. Yeah, good luck shushing her. Anyway, I'll see if I can put together a little something on Photoshop or something that we can post because I can't, I don't think I can explain it in my current state, so. <laughs> okay. Maybe I couldn't understand it either. So well, what we know the, now that we didn't know before is all al- alliums, alliums, alliums have a very similar structure. Yes. That's why they're all in the same family. <laughs> that would make sense. And garlic is kind of magical. Garlic is magic. Yeah, that's definitely true. Section four, we finally get to sharing what the recipe is that we're using which is why <laughs> we mentioned it in the intro because it's been a little while. And we also do a little bit of garlic germ removal. And I wasn't really familiar with this term, but the germ is just that little green part that's in the very center, that little green root almost. I mean, that's kind of a, a good comparison is because it's basically the start of a new leaf for the garlic plant. And so the, the tomb recipe very specifically says, and most of them did, that you should remove this. And I, we discussed that at, at pretty good length during, the, uh, during this section, going through it and when it may need, be necessary and when may it not be as necessary. We, we actually start this section right after a little smoke break. And we talk a little bit about what we're both enjoying but there's one point where it's very obvious how high we both are because we are trying to remember the word transcend that I literally said in the sentence before, and we can't remember it, first of all. And then I swap it in my head with suspend, and we both go, oh, oh yeah, suspend. So I, when we, I was editing, I was like, oh my God, wow, this one, <laughs> we're lucky we finished. <laughs> No, we always get back on track somewhere Hi. along the line. <laughs> side quest back, side quest back. We, we had taken a little break and I made a batch of tum because I wanted to try soaking the garlic in lemon and doing it without soaking the garlic in lemon. And I, I think I came to the conclusion I like a mix of both just because without soaking the lemon, it's too harsh. But if you soak all of it, it's just like there's not quite that nice spice that you get from garlic sometimes. So. I had to try it out first to see if I, if it was as amazing as I thought. 
and it's surprisingly easy and efficient. So we do it again. <laughs> <laughs> so after that we finally share the recipe and the steps that we'll be taking to make our sauce and then the last part of this section is what we already said is really us just talking through and explaining uh, and giving some tips about how to get that germ out of your garlic enjoy section four so while we're cooking, I've been enjoying some Shango Sticky Bee. What about you, Gretchen? So this is a part of my order that came today. This is Wedding Crasher. Fun. <laughs> so far, it seems to be pretty pretty nice. Although I've, I smoked a bit before I did my, my first batch of two of them, and I'm not as high as I'd like. So mm. Keep going. Does it turn you into Owen Wilson and what's his face? Vince Vaughn. <laughs> Fun, yeah. <laughs> oh, if only. I can't wait to get on with it. But okay. Yeah. So, so we so you have finished your aioli and you've actually already done a first pass of the tomb. Batch of the tomb. Of that this tomb. batch that I made. That I so I I peeled my and took the centers out of my garlic and then I soaked this batch's garlic with lemon juice. And I do think that really took the harsh qualities that can sometimes be in garlic down quite a bit because mm -hmm. it's it's has a beautiful garlic flavor but no harshness or no, no real spice to it hmm. so I'd almost like a little bit more garlic bite to it than I got from my first batch mm -hmm. which is half really and half maybe yeah I wonder if I would prefer that if I pre-soaked them. I do enjoy garlic, but it has taken me a long time. I used to hate garlic and I still, I can't eat raw garlic. I don't like eating cloves cooked or raw or anything. So I'm curious about the pre-soaking and how that would, I wonder if that, I don't know that I've ever had garlic pre-soaked. So I'm not sure if I know what the difference would taste like. This is, this would be a very good comparison really mm -hmm. since <laughs> This is raw, just raw garlic, and I soaked the whole cloves, so I didn't get as much exposure. Like if I had if I had chopped the garlic and then soaked it with lemon juice, I feel like it would be even more mild because it really okay. is. It's for being mostly like at least half garlic. The garlic is fairly mild. So. Cool. So if you wanted to make it even more mild, even milder, you would sort of cut it a little bit and then and then soak yeah. it. So okay. okay. That is awesome. That is in fact what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> is it time to share the recipe and explain why we've been talking about emulsions and garlic this whole time? Prob probably. Probably. Okay. okay. It's probably time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we we are gathered here today to make tuum <laughs> or tuum. We saw two different variations of the pronunciation. There could be others out there that we don't know. Apologies if we're getting it wrong. You might have right. heard us say it differently this whole time. Sorry about that. Well, that we're too, just trying. But... We're trying to cover our bases. We've come across yeah. a couple pronunciations. <laughs> we are trying to pronounce it. Pronunciate it. Pronunciate. <laughs> I don't even speak English well. Why am I even trying <laughs> with other languages? <laughs> oh my gosh. As Gretchen said earlier, she came across this recipe because she suggested that we make aioli. And I said, oh God, I can't handle eggs. And she found this other amazing substitute called toum or toum. I think that's all we've seen to so um, far. Yeah. Toum. Too. And it can work as a substitute for garlic. It can work as a substitute for a couple of other things that we'll talk about. But most importantly, it does not have eggs. No! Eggs. Yay! No so eggs. we don't have to worry about sort of the messiness of eggs getting into this situation because eggs are messy bitches. Like they... Ugh, messy. Very picky as we just spent ages talking about that, you know, you have to woo them. You have to woo yes. the egg. Oh, the egg, so much work, so much commitment. Yeah, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. Our friend Garlic here also likes to be wooed. <laughs> Play hard to get when you need to. Yes. No, just kidding. Don't play games. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. I think that's a bad idea. Yeah. 
just take your time. That's what the garlic's doing. Yeah. Taking its time. Maybe if we have a little, any energy at the end, I want to talk <laughs> to you about a couple of things. I started, I was like, while I was showering, I'm not sure if it was the pot I smoked, but I did a real deep dive the other day about some of my former relationships. At some point we'll have to talk about some of the things that I was like, huh. Shower revelations are some of the most profound. They really are. I was, I mean, yeah, I was having a minute or yeah. five or 10. I don't know. It was, it, as it, I yeah, said, it was, showering. you transcended time. Yeah, yeah. it definitely, it definitely <laughs> transcended time. Garlic also extends time or it, it uh, what did I say? Extends time. You said, I know, but what did I mean? <laughs> what did we just say? I don't know. Suspense, suspense, Ah, uh, suspense, garlic. Time. Garlic also suspends in time. <laughs> in time. <laughs> and also it suspends oil, which is fucking amazing. Yeah. So like I, I literally found this in two minutes and then we started to actually like look into what this was and it's fucking cool. So cool. I'd never heard of this before since there were a plethora of recipes for it on the internet too. Since I have no concept of this, but very much it's like garlic. Lemon juice, salt, oil of a neutral variety, and water. And that's it. Five ingredients. Although I hate all the fucking people who kept writing, it's three ingredients. And I'd read the recipe. I'd be like, this is not three ingredients. It's five ingredients. Now I know three and five is not that far apart, but quit lying. Five isn't even that many. (laughs) That makes sense. Three to five doesn't make a difference to me. Yeah. Be honest. I'm going to get more mad. I'm going to walk away when you tell me three and it's actually five. Yeah. I was like, are you fucking kidding me? I have a problem with recipes that like basically don't consider water an ingredient. Just because you have it doesn't mean it's not an ingredient. I did see in some places that there is a version of this that adds mint. Oh. Which could be interesting. I definitely would want to try that. I just started a new batch of preserved lemons. I want to make this with preserved lemon too. Ooh, that sounds so good. This sauce does come from Lebanon. I'm not sure if we mentioned that or not. In a little bit, we'll talk about some fun stuff we learned about Lebanon. It's often used with grilled chicken or rotisserie chicken. We saw swordfish is good. Salmon is good, which I'm going to do with it tonight. Mm -hmm. You're also making... We might be having Monty, but we could put it on top of the Monty, so... Ooh, yeah, just in place of the other yogurt. Yeah, Yeah, the garlic sauce. I mean... Which makes sense. Turkey and Lebanon are not too far apart from each other. There may even be Lebanese Monty. You never know. Totally. It seems the something I saw said, so it's it's eaten. It's a pretty large part of Middle Eastern cuisine. And so it's eaten in Armenia, Turkey, Azerbaijan, Lebanon, Egypt, Jordan, Syria, Palestine, Iraq, and Israel. So just to name a Every, few. Everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> exactly fucking everywhere (laughs) yeah all the places and so we're gonna try it Gretchen's already made it obviously as you heard but I'm gonna make it she's gonna talk me through it what should we talk through the steps yes there's a unique step here where the recipe we're using recommends pulling out or cutting out those little green germs in the center of your garlic so Gretchen's gonna talk me through that and then we'll make the sauce and you seriously I'm so, I'm so excited. I already did one because now I can be so excited about how easy this is. Like, (laughs) especially if you have a blender or a food processor, this is going to be very, very easy for you to do. Okay. Obviously easily customizable because basically you have five ingredients to start with and just do whatever. Could you do a hand mixer? I think now. So it does recommend that if you're doing it by hand to do it with mortar and pestle. And I think because there's a bit of a Hmm. grinding motion that helps Hmm. break the oil particles apart, that's a little bit better. But basically anything fast, fast moving. So I think you could get away with, oh, you mean an immersion blender? Both. If you you didn't have a food processor or a blender, could you do an immersion blender? Do an immersion blender. Okay. You can definitely do a hand mixer. It's it's basically the same. You won't be able to, obviously you won't be able to grind up your garlic is the, the main issue. Got it. And but, that's important for those binding purposes. Right. We're using, oh, bugger. What's the name of this website again? A Mediterranean uh, dish. Diet? Mediterranean dish. Yeah. Our ingredients are as follows. One entire head of garlic. Whole head. A teaspoon of kosher salt. The juice from one lemon. 
one and three quarter cups of oil. The recipe recommends grapeseed or sunflower. Anything neutral will work. I've seen, I saw another recipe that used avocado. Mm. So I'm using part grapeseed and part canola because I ran out of grapeseed. So those are my oil combos today. And then ice water. Ice water is, seems to be fairly key. It was pretty widely used across the recipes, at least some sort of water. I like the ice water because, as you pointed out earlier... Whoa, she has a lot to say right now. Kenzie. She's really... She's bringing me a present. So let's oh. see if I can get her to bring it down here. Kenzie, where are you? Come here. I'm all the way over here. Don't drop it there. Come here. Over here. <laughs> Oh, okay. Oh. Probably didn't, could not really see that she had had her ball. I could. She there. dropped a little ball. Yeah, I yeah. could see that. That was fun. I'm oh, telling yeah. you, I would watch a live cam. Yeah. Let's get back to it. Lemon oil, salt, garlic, water. Yep. So, number one, peel the garlic clove. Cut the cloves in half and remove the green germ. This is optional. We both did it because, A, I never had anybody instruct me to do that before. So, I was curious to know what that was about. But the fresher your garlic is, the less likely you are to need to do this. And and the type of garlic would obviously make a difference for this too, depending on the 20 different fucking types that are out there. (laughs) Now we know that. Yeah. So I actually, I haven't cut mine out yet. I wanted to talk to you about the necessity of it with the ones I have. The ends of mine. Yeah. I mean, they're a little bit green on the end there. A little bit. So should I cut that? little end off i did find the smaller the clove was the less likely it was that i could even see the germ in it so sure i am going to cut mine starting at the stem end through the widest part because because when i so let's go back to the north pole south pole yeah so you would be starting at your north pole okay and cutting straight down okay but it's more directional all the way through one of the oceans right oh there we go you're popping it up yeah i see yeah so you can kind of pull from oh cool the root and it'll pop up a little bit and then yeah because i (laughs) found she said cut it out but i found i could just remove it with my fingers fun using that that root bit i was able to yeah kind of lift it up so that it was easy to pull out awesome so you just kind of squeeze on both ends a little bit until the center pops up yeah and if it doesn't pop up, that's probably a good indicator that it doesn't need to be removed. Because, yeah, I was finding some that were real skinny. Remind me why she said we do this, because there's a little bit, the slight bit of bitterness that can come with yeah, this that, part in the middle. That green part in the middle. The littler, the smaller the clove was, the smaller it was. And I was like, I'm not doing this. Spending too much time for this, the maybe imperceptible bitterness. amount of bitterness. Yeah. I found with some of mine, even if they didn't have a green center, the tip was a little bit green. Mm-hmm. So I am cutting that off. Yeah. I mean, if you just want to be on the safe side and that's easy enough to do. So much easier. I, I agree. <laughs> okay. All right. On to the fifth section. And getting into the end of the emulsions uh, journey that we're taking today. And this is when we're doing the uh, oil and chopping the garlic. And so you chop the garlic with the salt, then you add your lemon juice, and then you start adding your oil. And you alternate between one cup of one quarter cup of the oil and a tablespoon of ice water. And then you spend about 10 minutes going between those two. Right. And Gretchen finishes hers first and it's beautiful, perfect, fluffy, amazing. And I finish shortly after, but I have a lot of self-doubt and a lot of questions. And so Gretchen helps me kind of troubleshoot just because I didn't have that same fluffiness that Gretchen had. So we try a few things. You'll hear us just working through that a little bit. Long story short, it was fine. But yeah, you'll hear that process. And then then we talk about Lebanon because we figure if we're using a sauce from there and thought we should do a little research and find out about the country where this comes from, like primarily comes from. So we talk a little bit about Lebanon, like Gretchen said, and then we really close out the full episode with me taking my mix out of, or my sauce out of the refrigerator, which was one of the attempts that we made to try to 
get it back to that texture that or get it to that texture that we wanted. And so I attempt again with another and ultimately it doesn't change it that much. So we call it a day. <laughs> Sometimes you just got to let it know, let it be what it is. So, right. So, so enjoy section five. This is our last one. I'm going to put a little more ice in my water. Here. Okay. <laughs> I have to do that too. Okay. So now we know the five very simple basic ingredients. And we've talked through how to prepare the garlic. Right. Do you want to talk us through the steps that we'll be doing next? Yes. So once your garlic's all deconstructed, <laughs> you are going to place your garlic and the kosher salt in the food processor and pulse a few times until the garlic looks mince, stopping to scrape down the sides. Add the lemon juice and pulse it a few more times. Again, scrape down. All right. While the food processor is running, just hold the oil ever so slowly in the top opening of the food processor. Use the top opening of the processor to drizzle in the oil. And after you used about a quarter of a cup, Add in one tablespoon of ice water. Oh, it says stop to scrape down the food, pro the sides of the processor bowl. I did not do that. I did that. None oh. of that. I did no scraping the <laughs> first time around. Okay. Well, so that seems optional. No, I'm, yeah. I'm sure there's probably some large pieces of garlic in mine that might not be so fun to discover later. <laughs> so, all right. So you're, you're, we're doing our slow courtship of the garlic <laughs> and the oil together. And you're going to keep alternating quarter of a cup of oil with a tablespoon of the ice water until you run out of oil. And then you're done. You're done. And yeah, so it's very, very simple. It says it should take about 10 minutes to drizzle in the oil. When I did my last batch, it took me six, but I think that is because I have my handy dandy Magimix. Disperser. Yeah, that has a beautiful oil disperser that made this perfect and easy. Nice. And then after we're done, we're going to talk about Lebanon some. Very exciting. So should we, should we make this puppy? I guess we should make this puppy. Okay, okay so garlic first and salt, correct? And salt, yes. And then we're going to pulse. Pulse. <laughs> I need to scrape. So we pulse until it's minced? Yes, minced. Okay. I'm scraping mine again. Scraping now. Okay, I'm going to keep pulsing. All right. I think mine's pretty well minced. Okay. So I'm Can adding make... my lemon. Add the lemon juice and keep pulsing? Right. Okay. It just says a few times to combine, so not as much. Okay, so my liquid is still kind of separated. So pulse a few more times. Mine still doesn't look like yours. I think my bowl might be a little too wide. It's oh, not, yeah, that's probably part of it. It can't get down that low. Okay, so now we've added our lemon. I'm, I'm going to start adding my oil. Turn this on. Low. Mine only has one speed, so okay. I'd probably do high. And then ice water. Do you stop it when you're doing the ice water? Nope. Keep it going. Oh, keep going. Oops. Just keep running. Okay. Oh my God. Is your shoulder hurting? No. Because oh I get God. to dump it in there and let it go. Ugh. And I'm on my last edition of oil. Okay. So. Same. Okay. Nope. Nope. Not done. Not done. Shit. Shit. <laughs> Still got a ways to go. <laughs> Okay, I'm checking mine. It's combined, but not fluffy. I would keep whipping it then. Okay. Okay. Were you all checking right. the time at all? I was not. Nine minutes. Okay. It took longer this time because I did all the scraping. <laughs> oh, fair enough. Mine's not totally done just yet. I'm going to keep going a little bit more. Okay. Holy moly. <laughs> wow. So good. The garlic. Oh, the garlic. It's so intense in this one. So, so this was the one without the pre-soaked garlic? Yeah. Holy fuck, the garlic. Lots no of garlic happening. Oh, so good. <laughs> I am really happy with this much garlic. I'm going to show you mine because it has a different consistency. So I'm kind of... Is it, is it softer? It feels mm. thicker. It's more liquidy. It's thicker? It feels thicker. Maybe you need a little more water. A little more water? Yeah. I just keep eating it. I can't stop. I don't, I don't, I don't understand how I've lived my life this far without. 
<laughs> knowing about this wonderful stuff. Turning my pulser back on. Or I mean my <laughs> mixer. Pulser. Oh, my pulser. Adding another tablespoon. Mm. No. It's still really thick? Yeah. Huh. Oh my god, food processors. Yeah, I'm not, not sure what not- to do. I mean, it tastes really uh, good. It, do you, is it a spreadable consistency? Okay. It's more mayonnaise-y. Oh, no, that's that's pretty much how mine looks. Okay, my, I, I don't know if fluffier. No, I don't think so. Okay, it tastes really good. I mean, I guess that's all. I, I, care I was about. gonna say, I, I I think if it's a spreadable consistency and it tastes good, I think you're all right. That's you mm-hmm. know, um, it looks. Although I hate to say this, but it does look a little bit like it might be on the borderline of breaking. Oh really? Huh. But I'm not sure because it definitely looks right. Can you mound it? Does it make a mound? Hmm. No. Doesn't look separated though. There are some air bubbles. I wonder if I should do it on low for a little bit longer instead of high. Maybe. Okay. What is it? Is it warm? Is the mixture warm at all? It's not cold. Would you be able to take it off of there, put it in your fridge for a couple minutes, and then definitely put it back on? Yeah. I think that's that. probably a good idea. Okay. I do have a few chunks. I think my food processor is a wide base. Yeah. So. <sighs> goodness oh goodness well it tastes really good that's all i really care about (laughs) you know what i was thinking about is how useful this is this would be because if you like marinated fish in it ooh, ooh, mm, or maybe i'll do that really anything and then i was like you could pretty much like use it to add to anything you could put it on i mean it's so versatile the only thing overpowering about it is the garlic and if you like garlic that's not overpower no it's amazing Glorious. Yeah. While my sauce is in the refrigerator, chilling a little bit more, which we hope will help the problem of its consistency, I'm going to talk a little bit about Lebanon. Okay. Yay. Located on the eastern shore of the Mediterranean Sea, the capital is Beirut. The climate is sort of hot, dry summers, mild, humid winters, low 50s to high 90s, depending on the season. And then you've got sort of rugged, mountainous terrain, except along the coastline. It's bordered by Syria on the north and the east, Israel on the south, and then the west is the Mediterranean Sea. It's one of the most densely populated countries in the Mediterranean, and fun fact, has a high literacy rate. When you say high, how high? I don't have a percentage. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'll share the resource for this, but it's Encyclopedia Britannica. And okay. they said high literacy rate. And I was like, I don't know, above 80? I'm not sure what that means. <laughs> I'm assuming that probably means more than mo- most countries, I'm assuming. because Right. I mean, Higher than most. Or else why point it out? Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, if it's densely populated, but also kind of an old country, you know, like yeah. very well yeah. established. Definitely. So lots of drama in that area of the world so (sighs) there's a lot happening we'll talk a little bit about that in a second and Lebanon is in the thick of it who lives in Lebanon it's a mixture of Phoenicians which is a word I have heard a ton of times and never really understood I think I actually thought it was like people from Florence I'm not sure why but it is so Phoenicians are anyone who lived in Lebanon before Lebanon was established as a country. So whenever you've heard Phoenician, that is pretty much translatable as Lebanese. And there are also Greek, Armenian, Kurdish, and Arab populations in this area. Arabic is the official official language, but you will also hear Kurdish, Armenian, French, English, and in some religious I don't want to say sex, maybe sex is the right word, but in some religious churches, Syriac is spoken, which is like Aramaic first century language after the death of Christ. So also, can we not have like our timelines be associated with the birth and death of one person who may or may not be real? Because I would love to talk about things that don't have to do with Christ, but yeah, that's okay. I know. That's not the Me point too. of this. Yeah, that is not why we're, no, we're not here for that right now. No, we but every time I see later. yeah BC and AD, I'm like, what? Why do we do this? Okay, so because we always have Becca, so why I know we throw that in a way now. I know. Okay, so because it's a coastal region, it has this really important history in being a trading center, and there were three sort of dominant port towns that brought in a lot of culture and trade and made this a really unique area. 
but it wasn't until 1920 that it really became a state. And it was through France and through the League of Nations that this was established initially as something called the state of greater Lebanon. And then in 1926, so pretty short after that, pretty shortly after that, it became a republic. And then fast forward to 1943, they achieved independence. So pretty cool. And then unfortunately in 1975 until 1990, there was a civil war, which is a pretty big chunk of time. As with every country, as it was establishing itself from 1943 on, there were internal social and economic struggles. But because Lebanon borders Israel and now Syria, there are a ton of external influences that force political decisions that are outside of Lebanon as a country. And so With those external pressures, there were a lot of Palestinian refugees who were looking for asylum. And there's a lot of, I think the word I saw, which was new to me, was confessional relations. And that is when there are religious communities who share the same faith cross borders. So there are a lot of Muslims in Lebanon. There were a lot of Muslims in Palestine, the Palestinian Muslims are seeking refuge in Lebanon. It's causing all of this political, social, economical strife in terms of like states within states and all of that. So it causes this civil war from 1975 until 1990, like I said, Mm -hmm. but then they're able to resolve it a little bit. It starts to stabilize. They have a little bit more socioeconomic and political stability, but because of their location, they're still heavily rooted in the Syria conflict and the Israeli-Palestine, I'll say dynamic, because it's such a loaded- Right, right. Yeah. It's a whole thing. It's a whole thing. The whole thing. Exactly. So Lebanon is still, can't really figure out its own identity because it's so rooted in what's happening in its bordering nations. Here we are about what are some fun things about Lebanon. So there's this thing called the, I think I, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing this correctly, but it's the Jaita Grotto. And it's this undercount, underground cave system that's two systems. And it is 5.6 miles long. And it's the longest cave system in the Middle East. Super cool. So the lower cave system has this underground river that's almost four miles long. And the upper cave system has the largest hanging stalactite in the world. And they're 27 feet long, 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 hanging. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. (gasps) So it also in this, in Lebanon is the largest hewn stone. So the largest man-made stone. And it was discovered by this team of German and Lebanese archaeologists. And it's 64 feet by 19.6 feet by 18 feet and weighs 1,650 tons. Jesus. Yeah. And they found this other massive rock nearby, which weighed 1,240 tons. And they named it the stone of the pregnant woman. And I really don't appreciate when people associate large things with pregnant women, or I should say pregnant people. I don't (laughs) know that there's another reason why they named it this and it bothered me. Anyway, those were some of the things I learned about Lebanon when we were researching Tome. (laughs) I guess one of us should at least done a little bit more research on the cuisine. I Mm -hmm. hadn't really thought about that. I mean... Well, I think I think some things we could infer from the fact that it's mountainous is that oh well, I don't know I have well thought. it is Mediterranean yeah so we've got that as the baseline and what they like we said earlier one of the things they use or like they use to um a lot in grilled chicken and shawarma and kebab and um, sometimes it's even used just as like a dipping sauce for french fries or artichokes or sandwiches or oh my like God. anything containing chicken. Oh, I thought it said grilled chicken, but I thought it said grilled cheese. And I was like, yes, grilled cheese, I want to yeah. dip it in grilled cheese too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I would think that, yeah. I mean, I just can think of so many ways to use it. So I was just like, and now that, that I've had it and I'm like, yes, french fries, please. Can we get some french fries? Totally. We had fries last night. I can't have french fries today. No, not back to back, I guess. Well, you could. I could. 
Okay, should I check mine? See if it's chilled oh, enough yeah. to do another so pass? Okay. If we can get it to whip up a little bit better for you. All right. What is going on? What is going on? I don't know. I cannot get the part on. Are you twisting it from the wrong side? That was my problem earlier. No, there's only one in point. Oh my gosh, I don't know. All right, BRB. I got to get the expert. One okay. Okay. James comes out and goes, okay, what happened here? And then he just moves <laughs> one thing and he's like, okay, there you go. And I was like, oh my God. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Why can't I figure this out? I'm a smart person sometimes. Oh my God. Okay. All right. I'm going to pulse again. <laughs> okay. What do you think? It's better, but it's not fluffy. It's getting better. And I don't want to overdo okay. it. I feel like I'm just going to accept Stop. it as it is and let it be itself. But An excellent idea. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, we have artichokes to eat. Oh my God. Oh, my God. Perfect. We're going to eat some artichokes. Perfect. Yeah, we are. Will you grill them or what are you going to do? Pro oh, I'll probably just steam them. There you go. My slightly mayonnaise-y, your perfectly fluffy tofu. <laughs> First try. And Excellent job, Gretchen. Thanks. Yeah. I might Good just marinate my end. fish in it. Oh, thank you. I, I mean, go for it. Yeah. I, I say go for it because I think it'd be really good. Yes. Thank so. you. I'm excited. Thank you for joining us for another high gluttony adventure. As always, we learned a lot. We learned a lot about things we want to do again, things we don't want to do again. We learned a few things about Lebanon, which we were new to us. And I think basically we say this often, but this sauce maybe changed our lives. <laughs> we like we will always use this in some capacity forever i wonder i wonder if maybe food has a little too much uh, sway over our lives at this point <laughs> we won't worry well, about that <laughs> <laughs> that maybe we shouldn't be doing this podcast if we felt differently <laughs> we wouldn't be doing this podcast if we felt differently <laughs> fair enough <laughs> so final thoughts even though I struggled with the consistency it wasn't exactly what I wanted I definitely want to try it again I'm determined to get it to that fluffiness I need to figure out my fucking food processor which I will at some point oh my god but I ended up using it with salmon and serenade or serenade <laughs> talking about the music garlic I almost said it makes you sing so <laughs> I would have the sung. garlic I would it. have sung yeah <laughs> yeah then the salmon yeah. will if the garlic doesn't then the salmon will so I, I'm determined to get it right I ended up marinating it in I ended up marinating my salmon in the sauce and it was really really delicious so I want to try it on other things I'm super excited to make it again oh I ate it on well we ate it with artichokes as I mentioned in the episode and a couple days later we I had it with french fries and it was <gasps> amazing so y'all y'all need to try that because it's super good <laughs> did you make those one fries that you sent me the recipe for that's like yes. the yeah the easiest we fries ever those. yeah we well, will at least share that on the uh the on the website yeah we should share okay. it on the website because if we don't end up doing that, I don't know if I really want to cover fries, fried food, unless I get a, a fryer, which I was threatening to do this week because I want to make donuts again and not have to worry about managing mm. my own heat. But <laughs> that makes fries. sense. That, yeah, that makes sense. So, oh, okay, maybe this summer. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, my, my final thought would be don't make this sauce when you're emotional because for some reason that contributes to the the issues we might have had with our sauces and you know most things can be fixed and if not then you just have some nice garlicky oil that you can use for something but <laughs> yeah even if it breaks it'll still taste delicious it will so, mm -hmm. all of it's worth it it's all worth it but 
Come find us on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, and HighGluttony.com, where we share all this info that we dig up for these episodes. And have fun. Try to make some tomb. It's amazing. And you don't need any eggs. Woohoo! If you like eggs, try to make an aioli, which, yay! No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> So we hope you enjoyed this. We hope you adventure on your own with these recipes since you are gluttoneers. So have fun, enjoy, and until next time. Hi, gluttony. <laughs> I love it. I just have to yell it <laughs> every time. Every time. I was like, I haven't done that in a while. We have to do it. I know. We got to make it part of the script. Yeah. Anyway. Bye, all you lovely gluttoneers. Thanks for joining us. We love you. Bye.